Nikoletti with me now. Hi, Nicoline. Thanks very much for your time. Hi, so, how are you? Okay, new. Good things. So, for, I'm just going to do a little introduction on you, Nicoline. Um, for some people that don't know you, I'm really excited. You were one of the first people I wanted to interview. So, um, Nicoline is someone that is one of very few people I know that chose a career in real estate right from the beginning. Um, very few people do that. Unfortunately, um, a lot of people in our industry um, fall into real estate, fail into real estate, think they've got no other option and it's the most exciting career ever. So. Nicoline, you've been in real estate for years. You've been a successful agent in your own right um, with, with different companies. And for the longest time, um, you have been the head of training and development for Century 21, which is one of the global leaders in real estate. So you've been running um, training and development for the South African market. And um, in the short time I've known you, I've learned a lot from you and I want to pick your brain. So hopefully this continues for a long time to come. But thanks for your time. I know you're Any, busy. Anytime. Okay. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump right in uh, talking about the world of real estate. And these are questions that I mean, I think you can give me the most amazing stories um, to, to some of these questions. So. I'll start right off because we're both in real estate. Do you think, and, and when, did, when did you discover this? Do you think that real estate could work for anyone, no matter their background? Do you think that regardless of someone's background, they could be successful in real estate if they chose to? Yes, I think anybody can be successful, but I, I, I think there's two things that you absolutely need to have. Uh, you need to be teachable you need to be willing if you have those two things i mean you can you can absolutely do real estate i mean we um in real estate it's all about building relationships talking to people and the all the skills and all the knowledge you need we can train you but if you're not teachable and you if you are not willing real estate won't be for you but if you have those two things absolutely no matter whether you have never been in sales before whether you uh, were a teacher, it doesn't matter your background. If you're willing and you're teachable, yes, absolutely, real estate can work for you. Yeah, so there is like this conception that, um, and I've heard people say this before, they've said, I can't, uh, I can't um, do sales in real estate, which effectively sales, because I've never sold anyone. I'm not a salesperson. I, like, I love people and I love, um, you know, being part of people's journey in their lives when they're changing in terms of, you know, people buy real estate for whatever reason, but I'm just not a salesperson. What would you say to that? Well, well I think, um, in my opinion, a real estate agent should be a trusted advisor. Um, we are there to guide them and help them along the way to get to the product or the property that they want. So for example, if someone, um, walks into a Mercedes dealership, that person on the floor does not have to convince him that he wants a Mercedes. He's already there. He already showed an interest. The only thing that they have to do is find out what their needs and wants are to put them into the right Mercedes. It is exactly the same with property. Every single person wants a property and when they contact you to either buy or sell a property, the need is already there. We just have to be their trusted advisor to find out if they want to sell um, what what needs to happen do they need to be in a different place if they want to buy what are the things that they are looking for what are they must haves and what are they nice to have and based on that we simply go and look at the stock that we already have or source the stock and, and put them in front of those properties so do you have to be a hard sales person preferably not uh, please not. It's all about building relationship and making sure that you provide the best product and service for the buyer and seller that you serve. So tell me a little bit about the career path of someone that was considering a career in real estate. So obviously the, 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 the demand we get a lot is how do I become an agent? Do I need a qualification? Where do I start 
do you offer training um, once you affiliate with the with the brand like us? So obviously, I imagine you would start through some internship process. But what? How big is the path? I mean, how how many levels can one grow to once they start? Where does it start? Okay, so. Um, the first thing is that we are so we are really lucky in real estate that we can earn while we learn. So the, the first step that we need to do is we have to join an estate agency. And um, once you join an estate agency, you then have to be registered at the EAAB, which stands for the Estate Agency Affairs Board. So every single person that is in real estate um, uh, uh, buying or, or selling or renting has to be registered with the estate agency of Facebook. So that's step number one. Right. Now, once we are registered, we can already start selling. Now, depending on the stages that you are um, in your process, you would either have to do that with uh, a principal uh, supervision or mentorship, but you can earn while you learn. So step number one is to register with the estate agency of Facebook. The day you get issue your FFC, you then have to do a 12 month internship. And what this internship is, is 12 months of taking you through the activities that you should be doing as an estate agent. So it's coaching and guiding you on the things that you need to be an estate agent. Then you have a national qualification that you need to obtain. And that is mm -hmm. called EQF4, National Framework Qualification Level 4. And you can do your logbook and your NQ4 at the same time, preferably do them at the same time because they kind of walk together, if I can say it that way. And it also will, it will also save you a little bit of time. So your NQ4, uh, if you do a full course, it could be up to a year. And again, it's knowledge based. And then you have to do assignments going forward from, from that. So just to recap quickly, register at the state agency affairs board. 12 month internship in QF4. Then after you've done those three things, you then have to do your PDE4. And PDE4 stands for your professional designation exam on level four. And that is a four hour open book test on the NQF4, right? Once you pass your PDE4, you then ask to be upgraded to a full status agent and now you are a qualified registered estate agent right so that's up until level four then obviously we have things like cpd which is continuous professional development which you will fall into every year for the rest of your year in real estate if you then want to take another step up and you want to become a principal and the term principal is called owner um, and managing director so to speak of a particular agency um, then you need to do your NQF5. Now again, your NQF5 um, is also a national qualification. The only difference is that the NQF4 was based on what agents need to know to uh, effectively market and sell properties. NQF5 is what a principal needs to know to effectively run a real estate office, right? Once you have your NQF5, uh, you then upgrade to become a principal and once you are a principal, you will then do your PDE5 exam, which is again a four hour open book test on um, the NQ5. And then you become an MPRE, which stands for Master Practitioner in Real Estate. So if you're fully qualified as an estate agent, you become a PPRE, Property Practitioner in Real Estate. And if you are a principal, fully qualified, you're an MPRE, Master Practitioner in Real Estate. What you said was so interesting in terms of the first thing you said was you can learn and earn right from the beginning. So um, you answered one of the questions that was how do you become a legal um, agent? And that's obviously right in the beginning when you join a company, you register with the EAB. There's, there's actually something so powerful in what you said in terms of earning and learning. You and I both have met and we currently know a lot of real estate agents that are millionaire real estate agents in terms of what they're earning is annually and it's so powerful like it just sat with me and i had to just think like omg this person didn't have to go and get a six or seven or five year degree in order to get into an environment and have the mentorship and training to reach those levels of professionalism and earning 
And that's quite mind blowing because um, although it's very governed and structured, it's not a high barrier of entry as long as you comply to be really successful um, and coupled with what you were saying right in the beginning of you don't need to be a hardcore salesperson. Um, you just need to have the work ethic um, and be teachable. So those three um, can make for like a very, very powerful career in real estate. Um, would you say that it's flexible? I know, you know, in terms of compared to a nine to five where you've got to clock in and clock out, do you think top agents can still have the life freedom flexibility and still earn at that level? Absolutely. I think the first thing that we need to make clear is um, there's a difference between flexi hours and half a day. So there's no <laughs> that believe yeah. uh, half a day. That's absolutely nonsense. But we do have flexi hours. Um, we can move our day according to what is needed, but we don't work half a day. It's because in real estate, as in anything, what you get out is what you put in. And you, if you, the more you put in, the more you will get out. So absolutely, flexi hours. I mean, we, we have estate agents, a particular estate agent who did really, really well in December. And in December, she took two weeks off. Um, so again, that's not always the norm, but it is absolutely possible. We have um, estate agents that are absolutely brilliant and they work full on and then take two months off. That is more than possible. So yes, flexi hours, but not half a day, no. Yeah, there is, there is quite a big difference. Can I ask you to tell me a little bit about the training academy that you developed? Because I found that it's been a huge, huge part of um, making uh, recruitment really easy, if I can say that. You know, professionals are looking for someone to hold their hand and really guide them to make this work for them. Um, and it's not necessarily brand new people in the market, but people that have maybe been agents before elsewhere. I must say that in my experience, and I haven't been with too many companies, I failed at being a, a business owner, but I, I can say that I haven't yet seen any training academy like the one you put together. Can you talk a little bit about what made you make it so comprehensive and so detailed? Because I've I've noticed that your systems and your programs, which are unparalleled, can really take someone that's never done real estate before and yet offer a lot of value to seasoned professionals. Tell me about how you thought about how to put your whole academy together, because it's really cool. I think it started again when I was an estate agent. I was working for an um, I was an agent probably for around a year and a half and yeah. uh, my people were speaking about capital gains tax and I put my hand up and I said, excuse me, what is capital gains tax? And he looked at me with this disgusted look on his face and said, how do you not know what capital gains tax is? Wow. And I was shocked and I thought, well, and my response to that was, well, because you haven't told me yet. And um, Thank you. that we, we, we fall into the strap of, of common sense. So the longer we have been in an industry or actually anything, we forget that not everything is common sense. So we've been in the industry for, for, for many years. So we know what OTPs are and, and grants. And we talk, to, we, we talk to people as if they know the same thing. So when um, I started creating the academy, I was like, if I knew nothing, if I was back uh, being a, a, a new agent, not knowing anything, what are the first things I would wanted someone to tell me that would have made my process a lot easier and quicker? And I wouldn't have to fought and try to figure out everything by myself. So I put myself back into the situation I was when I was a rookie or started out and I said, what would have helped me at that time? And that's where the academy started. Right. Amazing. If we look at, at, at a few of the trainings we have, um, one of the, the, the entry, entry level training is called Create 21 Training. And Create 21 Training is the entry level base and it gives you the skills to know what real estate is about. So Create 21 comes from the USA, Century 21 USA. It has been, it has won numerous awards. So what I've done is I've localized it to our particular markets because markets are a little bit different. Now what Create 21 does, it, it, it gets you started. So you're in real estate now, what? Well, what are your goals? Where do you want to go? Based on your goals, 
what, how many activities do you need to do? Okay, great. Now that you know what your goals are and how many activities you need to do, let's look at what are those activities. Now that we know what the activities are, let me explain to you how each of these activities work and how you go about them. So we talk about your database, how to contact people, how to um, negotiate, how to handle objections, how to do a CMA, which stands for Comparative Marketing Analysis, how to do a buyer's consultation, how to take a buyer through a property, um, how to negotiate or present an offer to your seller um, after, after sales service. Um, so we go through all of those things in Create 21. Then we've got another one called Pro 21. And what Pro 21 is, it's um, knowledge based. What is the difference between a full title and a sectional title? What is exclusive use in a sectional title? What different type of zonings are there? What is a show house and how do I do one? Okay, great, I have to market a property, but how, how, how do I go about marketing a property? I have to take photos, but how do I take good photos that really makes the property pop? So we go through all of those things and Pro21 is another 10 models. Then we have other trainings like rental trainings. C21 Rental is all about um, everything you need to know about rental. So that one's three modules. So the first module is all about the acts of laws that is relevant to rentals, the Prevention of Illegal Eviction Act, the Rental Housing Act, uh, Unfair Practice Regulations, and all of those things that apply to rentals. The second module is all about those frequently asked questions. What happens if my tenant doesn't pay or pays late? What happens if my landlord doesn't want to fix things? So we go through all of those things so that you have an understanding of what are those frequently asked questions. And then the last one, which is probably the most important one, is paperwork. Now, rentals, if it's not on paper, it does not exist. So we go through the importance of paperwork and how to complete all this paperwork to make sure that you protect your tenant and your landlord alike. Then we have, we have got quite a few trainings. We have digital marketing training. Digital marketing training grows. So there's an entry level one on, and then you'll see that there'll be different ad hoc trainings um, on the training academy as that is needed. So for example, we've got training on target marketing, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and as the, 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 that the social media and the digital marketing space changes, those training changes as well. We then also found that um, we have all these trainings and for a new um, person joining, it might be a little bit overwhelming. So what we did is we created something called the Go21 Coaching Program. So what the Go21 Coaching Program is, is think of it as a coach in a box. It's where I am with you for 92 days every single day, being with you, holding your hand, explaining to you what you should be doing on a daily basis. So it's email based. So from Monday to Friday, you get an email with all the action items and these action items then direct you to different trainings, different action items and spreadsheets or tracking sheets or whatever the case may be. So for example, um, week one, we, um, there'll be a downloadable link to get your tracking sheet and I'll explain how it works. Um, then in week two, we'll talk about show houses, for example, now there will be a training that takes you directly to how to do a show house what is a show house box and what should be in a show house box so for 92 days if you complete the program you have done create 21 pro 21 digital marketing ficker introduction to social media um, you've done seven show houses you've added 480 people to your database you have at least 12 listings um, so by the end of that program you should have at least one sale as a minimum we've had agents having up to five, six, seven sales in their first three months. So it's absolutely possible. So those are basically the ones for agents. And then obviously we have some training for principals and management as well, but we'll go into that a little bit later. No problem. You know, what you're saying is so, so cool. So like it almost guarantees an agent success. And if they can do that one minimum deal in that time period, it's just to repeat it because the principles are duplicatable. And, and, you know, I appreciate that you went into quite a bit of detail of what a person can expect in training and to anyone listening to or watching this video on um, considering a career in real estate, I would, I would really invite that person to really look at the type of training and development that your company is offering because it is so important to realize that um, we're not 
selling hamburgers with respect to the hamburger industry. A real estate professional is selling an asset that for most people is the greatest asset that we'll ever own in our lives, whether it's one or 10 uh, properties. So to really consider, if you're considering a career in real estate, really consider what is the internship program like, what is the training and the development and what standards are those upheld by. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm noticing quite a bit of a movement of property practitioners from either being business owners and operating on their own or maybe being affiliated with independence or running their own show from home or wherever. I'm finding quite a big movement from that kind of business model to a model like we offer um, as a national global brand. What in your opinion, because we all have opinions, what would what would be your opinion for why that's happening currently? What do you think could be motivating that? So uh, the benefits of joining a franchise as opposed yeah. to an individual. I think that the, the biggest thing is, is the time factor. If you look at a franchise, a franchise is a plug and play system. So the franchise yeah. has got that entire system in place for you. And as a new agent or as a new principal, you simply plug into the system and you get to get that traction and benefit from all of these things straight away. We versus an independent, everything you would have to create from scratch. You would have to create your own website. You would have to do your own marketing. You would have to do absolutely everything yourself. Double check if your if your contracts are correct. Double check if there isn't any new laws that came in that needs to be added to the contract or any legislation. And all of those things take time. And as we know, time is money. So as an independent, if I have to still do all of those things and try to sell, it's divided attention. And divided attention is divided attention. So I can either be really good at selling and managing a, a an office or being a state agent or be really good at administrative things. All right. So that is that um, thing. So by joining a franchise, you save the time of not having to go through that. So if we look at the the, 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 the cost benefit, yes, a franchise might have fee, but what would it cost you if you had to do your own website, your own marketing, your own co uh, have your own legal team, um, do your own right. training, do all of those things, then a franchise is so much, I want to say cheaper, but it actually is so much cheaper to have all of those things run in the background and you can focus on what you want to do best, which is selling property or running a real estate office. I love that. I actually got goosebumps because I, I was mentioning earlier on that I'm a failure of a business owner from a past life. And I think the biggest part of that was trying to figure out everything myself. I mean, your training academy on its own has hours and hours and hours and hours of training on how to close a deal pretty much guaranteed within your first, whatever, 30, 60, 90 days. And that's just one aspect of a business um, that we often have to figure out because it's quite a lonely road um, doing everything on your own. Okay, so I want to ask you one more question for this episode. What um, can you share a success story of an agent or a real estate business owner um, that you know of, whether it's now or recently, any like zero to hero story of a real estate professional and what was their background? Sure, there are actually so many. Um, we have quite a few. We, we have um, quite a few agents that started as um, as agents, new yeah. to the industry, never been before, um, going up to names, being good agents. We even have, if I can use the example of um, Neil Sportkeeper, which is an absolute superstar. Uh, he started as an estate agent um, in Century 21 Alberton and um, yeah. then he went on to, to purchase his first franchise which is Glen Vista, then um, got bought Mondier, Meyerton, uh, opened um, Century 21 Gap, then mm -hmm. opened Century 21 from the Bell Park um, and, and all of wow. those started from him being an estate agent within the group. We obviously have many estate agents that joined Century 21, um, learned everything that they need and then went off to go and start their, their, their own businesses, which is amazing. Um, so there, there are actually 
so many. I, I think that the, the biggest thing for me to be part of a franchise is, is that understanding and realization that we get to stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, we, we get to to experience so more and do so more because they've, they've, there's been giants before us. We don't have to figure out everything for ourselves. There's a system and we just have to follow that system. But we also need to understand that we can't be upset with the results we didn't get for the work that we didn't do. So when we put in the work and we do the activities and we follow the systems, the success will come. It's a formula, it has to work. Wow, gosh, that was amazing. It's so true when you talk about standing on the shoulder of giants and not needing to figure things out before and you're part of such a, a much bigger team that is bigger than you. So I love that. This for me was the best way to start my Monday. So I'm very grateful for your time um, for this episode. So I'm going to leave it here. And um, to everyone listening um, in this video, there's probably going to be a link below where you can learn more about our training academy um, through our portal and connect with us directly uh, if you're in South Africa. Nicolene, thank you so much for your time. It was awesome. And I will um, bug you in the future for more value. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks.